Namaste everyone. Welcome to my channel. I'm Celestial Farm Girl and uh, I'm here to take us on a trip through the stars, right? Uh, I pray um, love and abundance to all you love, okay? And uh, with that being said, today is Friday the 13th. Da, 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 da. <sighs> yeah, and we're going to talk about our inner child. Yeah, you know, I wanted to talk about it this morning, right? And I pulled the archetype card, and it was death, Thantos. Oh, wow. I was really hoping God would brought out, you know, the inner child, and I didn't feel very synchronized, to tell you the truth with the Holy Spirit and so I went ahead and did the you know the death and rebirth on Phantos I did my best I felt a little out of whack uh, it turned out to be about homeless people you know and things like that and it was the best I could do and so about an hour ago I got ready to do my next video you know and I had kind of like um, had still been thinking about the inner child, actually had jotted down a few notes, looked up a couple videos on inner child work, and then I pulled my card, and guess what? We got the star born. Yeah, born, inner child, look at that. Inside that egg is the most tender part of life, right? Yeah, yeah, starborn, inner child. If there ever was anything that depicts an inner child, I think that this right here does. This also makes me think of the co cosmic egg, right? Do you know there was a race millions of years ago in the universe that was said that every alien race had sent off some of their top dogs right to find the um the cosmic egg and that's the reason that possibly all those aliens of different races ended up landing here because mother earth is the egg she um you know inside her and she is the the inner child of the universe she literally gives birth constantly she never grows old and gives up she just breaks apart cracks open and transforms herself into something new through volcanic activity through storms through meteorites however it is mother earth has transformed from death to this cosmic egg more times probably than you could count on two hands you know from the death of the dinosaur i mean they they just keep talking about how many deaths there were throughout time while god you know nature was working on a plan to create us that could embody the spirit of the universe true nature which is loving kind gentle Oh, you have said so fierce, right? So fierce. And so let's think about our inner child. You know, our inner child is so kind and gentle. But remember times within your childhood where, you know, you had to get fierce. And the fierceness is in us from the beginning. It's how creation started was through fierceness. It takes fierceness to crack this egg. It takes fierceness to push yourself out of the womb. It takes power and energy and drive. And you got it from the day you're conceived and you begin shaping and forming yourself into this creature that holds that spirit that you brought with you from out of the universe, from out of nothing came something with a spirit, a mind, a heart, a soul. And and if all things were perfect, you would have never known no harm. You would have been raised with love and kindness, 
you know, milk and honey, right? As they would say. And is it, if it's true that you never knew no harm, then you'd never do no harm. Because if you don't know it, you can't do it, right? Right. Now, to me, that's kind of like an explanation of how humanity would want to be to, you know, bring heaven to earth. Which would mean people would have to be tough and understanding, too. To understand others and not take it as harm. Okay, well, that's a paradox. I guess we're going to roll the dice, okay? Hey, let's say a prayer that we all understand our inner child. And look, I dried this gourd up. I don't know if I've ever showed it to you guys before. But I heard today on a program that this gourd is the shaman's uh, number one tool. That when the shaman says a prayer and shakes this gourd, it goes to the four corners of the universe. And all the spirits of creation hear it. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I was so proud. My inner child popped up and I started smiling at myself like I am now and thought, you know, how clever you are to take this gourd and dry it up. And, you know, and I've been using it for a tool for about six months now. I realized that it was dry about the end of, uh, at, at the end of winter. And I got more drying that I grew myself this year. So I'm going to make me some big old rattles, okay? Okay. Yeah. You know, I tell you a story. I had a seance one time when I was eight years old. And I had a seance next to the graveyard with my best friend Chubbs, who is my same size. My brother Tony, who is two years younger. And my little sister Penny. And we had a dog tied up to the tent. We were actually camping out there. It was the backyard. And I was living in Grand Isle, Louisiana. I lived on an island. And everybody gets buried above ground in Louisiana because you can't dig down. There's water. And so, you know, we were a little intimidated by the graveyard, a little scared. You know how kids are, but they're, you know how kids are daring too. And so I had this great idea. I don't know why or where I got it. But I said, hey, let's have a seance. And so um, the only person that I could think of at that time who had passed on that I could contact was my brother, Billy. And I said, uh, we did this thing around our little campfire, called out the spirits, however children do it. I can't exactly remember because it was just something we were doing. And then I said, and if your spirit is here, show us by making the tent fall and about that time a black cat run out in front of the tent we had a dog tied to the tent the dog took off after the cat the tent fell we all took off running to the house we were terrified um i me and my brother had my little sister between us her feet weren't even touching the ground we were running so hard and fast you know and holding her ass up <laughs> <laughs> but that was one of many spiritual experiences that I have had working with the other world. You know, it's it just come to me naturally. Um, you know, I, I'm always thanking my grandmother. I love my ancestors. My ancestors go all the way back to Egypt. Um, I've seen Toth, Anubis have worked with them in the spiritual field that I know and seen and so yeah I have been connected to the other world and one of the most important things you need for that connection is to also be connected to yourself you know connected to your inner child your inner child is so important because it's it's innocent and it doesn't expect harm or gore, your inner child always expects something um, to happen because your inner child is curious, right? It's, it's run by curiosity, discovery. You know, the inner child within us always wants to know something new or find something out. Um, and this is the process that we go through as we grow through life. We never give up our inner child because our inner child will keep us young through keeping us learning more and more and more. 
you know, such as getting excited about an old door, you know, that's turned into my uh, spiritual rattle or things like that. You know, the simple things in life can be the most magical if you add a little touch of inner child faith and hope and belief to it and it doesn't hurt nothing at all nothing other than lifts your heart up and keeps your soul moist and loving and kind and gentle by believing in things most people would never believe in but most people give up on themselves by the time they're our age they feel old useless and wasted away and that's not the way it is we're very wise at our age and the older we get the wiser we are yeah we take care of ourselves we take care of our mind we take care of our body we take care of our spirit we take care of our soul when I say soul I talk about our emotions you know, so some of us still have emotions from when we were little children. I myself today, after my reading this morning, went in and was looking at things with my inner child again and um, looking for the places that needed to be healed. And believe me, I found them. You know, and they weren't just little things that, you know, can be bypassed. It's, you know, I began to remember all the times I was sick and how my mother would abandon me and never come in to help me. One time I had internal bleeding from a bicycle wreck and she just left me lay there for days. I ended up going in the hospital for two weeks after that. I was like seven years old. You know, I went back through these things where my mother didn't really care about me and realized, you know, one time we decided to go to the Gulf of Mexico and I swam in the water all day and got sunburned so bad that I had blisters all over me, my face, my body, and my mom just threw me in the back of the camper and left me there, abandoned me. You know, my mom really did not like me at all. And it was hard to face something like this. But on the other hand, God loved me. And it makes me want to cry because I have protection. Even going through that, you know, when my stepdad broke my jaw and I had to go to the hospital and was in there for a month, had to have surgeries and shit, you know, my mom never even came and saw me. And then she lied for him and said, I fell down the steps and he sure enough just punched me right in the face. I was 14 years old. And I realized that my mom only abandoned me because she abandoned herself. She wasn't there for herself either. She didn't stand up for what she thought was right. She kind of always went along with what the masculine said she was definitely dominated by the patriarchy and and would even sacrifice her child for them and so you know a lot of things that I've had to work through but let me tell you Holy Spirit has taken me there and I have learned to love that little girl I've learned to love her she was a sweetheart I mean, not much different than now, you know, just a sweetheart looking to make somebody smile, you know, you know, just waiting to see if there's anything that could be done to make other people happy and always telling the truth. And my mom hated me. She told me I reminded her of her own mom, so maybe she even hated her mom. She was the youngest of 12 children. By then, I don't know, maybe she was abused and neglected. They were alcoholic parents. So, you know, it's a long story of illness and disease that goes back into my family. And I am the curse breaker. I am the one that didn't go there. I am the one that changed. I am that one that walked the high ground. 
and that's why I call myself Celestial Farm Girl. <laughs> I love you guys. Okay, let's roll the dice. Enough about me. Let's talk about your inner child. Oh, we have Leo Fire in the South Node. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's the South Node. If it had been up here. Or if that would have been on top. Okay, that's it. Leo, South Node. Or uh, the South Node. We have Pisces. And we have Six. So it looks like we're doing some balancing and swimming around in our South Nodes. And sure enough, Pisces is the representation between death and life. This morning I did the reading on death, Thantos, and here this afternoon God did synchronize it. I'm doing a reading on birth and new life. So many of us many of us died in between the reading this morning and the reading I'm having right now I am not the same person that I was when I read this morning I still had an inner child wound that I didn't even recognize until later this afternoon when I began to look up inner child work because of the, the I wanted to do an inner child video so it was simple as that, as going back to my south node where that little girl was laying in bed in her internal bleeding and taking her by the hand and telling her I loved her. And you know, be with her there until Uncle Larry, who's my dad's brother, showed up and picked me up and carried me to the car and took me to the hospital. I don't think my mom even went. I was seven years old. And I'd been laying there weak. And blood was up coming out of my nose and my ears. It's hard to believe. Because you know I wouldn't do that to not even a dog, a cat, a rat, a spider. I would never, I don't believe in hurting anything. Except for a fly if it gets on me. I will admit. And they're always warned. I warned them. I'll get you. But other than that, yeah, and I, I look at myself between me and my mom and I wonder, you know, was I really her child? How can two opposites come from each other such as that? Because I care about everything. Let us pull an animal card today. I care about you guys. I care about healing our inner childs. I care about us feeling good and not allowing society and 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 the world to make us think because we're a certain age or in a certain bracket that we no longer exist or worth anything. We're in our prime right now. Anybody that's, uh, you know, over, 60 or older, between 60 and 80 is our prime. Yeah, we're in our prime, baby. And that's why we go back and heal that inner child to keep us feeling good and young. Change. Change. Change is good. Change is uh, about adaptability. Change brings... Um, uh, what do they call that? Uh, finesse or tact. The more changes you go through, the more you're capable of taking anything thrown your way. Never resist change. Use it as a tool to learn to become adaptable to anything. Flexible with all things. Like smoke. Like water. Flow change embrace the winds of change and refuse to be hindered by fear or resistance no fear no fear no there is nothing to be afraid of we've been here before 
We're not worried. We know where we're going in the end. And we know that we're no different than anybody else. We all go there. And there's no fear. Because when we go there, it's just a period of rest before we come back and finish the job. But the job never gets finished. It goes on and on forever. Embrace it as an opportunity for growth and allow your inner strength and wisdom to guide you through. Trust yourself. Trust yourself. Whether you're taking an inner journey to go and see your inner child, trust that you got what you need in order to do what you need to do. Guess what? Today, guys, is Friday the 13th. I love this. Death and rebirth on Friday the 13th, right? Okay. <clears throat> um, you want to connect with your child at the time of the trauma, is what the video told me today when I went back. And we've even talked about this quite a few videos ago. We haven't talked about our inner child for a while. And we all been uh, traumatized. Even if we were told we were being babies, oh, that didn't hurt you. Our emotions, which is an individual element all its own, don't always know that. Our emotions is where our trauma is. It's in how we felt at the time whether abandoned or, or, or beaten or, you know, however uh, criticized or just, you know, however the trauma occurred, um, you know, um, bullied, uh, beat down, however, to go back there and be with that child while it goes through it and love it and hug it and you know acknowledge what it went through what you went through acknowledge it and love yourself through it to the other side all the way through to the other side stand by your inner child you're enforcing and strengthening um something inward that you're doing that's going to change you and your inner child it'll change you both for the better you're going to grow from it and the inner child will grow from it you will learn to support yourself in your direst of times this card also means you have a destiny and of course you do. You do. You have things that you've done wrote down in this lifetime that you were going to do. And we get closer and closer and closer to our dreams in every lifetime. And our dreams change and fluctuate. And our interests change and fluctuate. But we basically continue forward on our same path. Who knows, maybe each and every one of us is going to have our own galaxy someday, the cosmic egg. As many galaxies as they are. Here, look at there, I am dyslexic. <laughs> anyway, you know, how many galaxies are there? Right? We don't know. And maybe someday that's what we're training to be. We're training to be little cosmic eggs and one day we'll be full and we'll crack and we'll crack open and we'll be the whole galaxy and we'll feel it and know it and understand it and the mind of that galaxy will work it out and turn it into something you know because every galaxy is different I mean look it's not beyond belief okay Let's see what Gaia has to say. That's not Gaia. Let's get Gaia. Mama. Aya. All the prophets in the Bible that end in Aya, Jeremiah, Isaiah, um, 
There was a couple more. But any of them that ended in Aya, I took to be the prophets of Gaia. Although Jeremiah threw curses on Jeconiah, I don't think that was supposed to happen. So, uh, according to the Bible, Jeconiah took the key to heaven and gave it back to God. And Jeconiah was taken prisoner by Babylon. And the king of Babylon gave Jeconiah a half of the kingdom. Whoa. Wow. That would have been Marduk, whom, accordingly, um, inherited the eyes of Ra. Yeah. That could have been when the kingdom and the eyes of Ra got divided up. You know, the eye of Horus and the eye of um, Seth. My God, I'll have to look and see. My puppy come up and I automatically just backed up to get it up here. But all my work's up here. So so that could have been at the time um, when the eyes of Ra were separated. Because according to some of the legends I heard of and read a little bit about. In Atlantis, the eyes of Ra were together. Huh. Describe. Oh no, the Queen of Swords. Truth. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, changing, working with our inner child, um, giving birth to a new. Um, what, what what do we want to call it? A new attitude. A new, more loving and appreciation of self. So that we could love and appreciate the things around us more. Because the more you appreciate who you are, the more you will appreciate the things that's around you. It starts right here. Knowledge. That's um, a confirmation. Knowledge. You know, the more you care and love for yourself, and I'm not talking about buying material things. I'm talking about diving into your soul. I'm talking about going within and loving those places that nobody ever even saw that were hurt, broken. Loving yourself as if you deserve it, and you do. You do deserve it. Nobody can love us the way we can love ourselves. And that's knowledge. I'm gonna I'm gonna read I love Gaia, but this is about learning and understanding. And the first thing you want to learn and understand is who you are. In the beginning of my journey, in fact my whole journey has been about learning who I am learning what I love, learning where I've been, understanding the things that I went through in a way that can keep me sane, in a way where I can still be happy with my life, to make the trauma somewhat abstract, you know, so that it can be worked on when one wants to. It's still in the closet, and I go in there and work on it now and clean it up. Whereas I used to cover it up with this big black curtain, and I never went in there. And I was nuts and crazy and unbalanced. The minute I started going into my mind, into my heart, into my soul, and telling that little girl she deserved better, she quit having a fit. She quit kicking and screaming. She began to calm down. She felt seen, she felt noticed, she felt loved. And it showed on the outside. It showed. I, I knew I was on to something. I knew I had to continue because something inside of me was healing and it was her, the little girl, the ghost of that little girl who was dying for somebody to care. 
and knowing that God cared for me and he cares for us all because we're all prodigies of God you know according to our ways is how you know even God maybe looks at itself because the better we are the better God can feel about themselves our creators right and knowledge skills understanding training education and practical experience that's that's uh, confirmation as to what I said I, I don't have to say a whole lot more this is saying knowledge skills you know being capable of loving yourself enough to take two minutes to go in and visit with a lonely inner child maybe that's been abandoned or maybe that was hurt or maybe that never got emotionally satisfied by their parents meaning loved and you know the right kind of attention not for what you could do but just for who you are the beautiful spirit soul encased in human form the magical of it all the magic of being able to take a particle and turn it into this that's magic think about it to start from nothing and and at this point in time in our lives we are this come here come here look I, I want to show you come here look is is Zora <laughs> Oh, she's full of spit and vinegar. Let me tell you something. She is something else. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Look at that face. Look at that face. And one of these subscribers named her, and I am so grateful. She fits it. She is a spitfire. And she's like the wind. You can hardly catch her. You know, I, I don't like it when she runs away from me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You ready to go be with your mommy? And this is inner child, right? Yeah, just um, running like the wind. Running and being free. And, you know, as long as nobody's getting hurt, whatever you do to make your inner child feel good, even if you have to start out at one step a day or two steps a day, begin to do it. Even coloring, writing, drawing, Remember what you used to do playing with trucks, you know Taking your trucks out to the sand pile Boy, I, I never thought of that. I used to like to play with my brother driving and making roads, you know to the sand Do you remember those fun little things? Drawing on the sidewalk I love you I think she likes it up here. Daffy wants up here too. Come on Daff. Come on Come on I can't let her on the bed because she eats my books. She, yeah, she eats everything. She can only be up there when I'm watching. So, so this is the knowledge of how important it is to make sure that you have a happy and bouncy inner child. That spirit is still with you. The spirits, we carry the spirits of our life within our soul in our body it's in the waters emotions and waters uh, probably stored around the hips and not close to the heart and that's why we have to go in and search these things and make judgments for ourselves. Did we get treated right? Did we get treated wrong? Do we feel abused? Did we feel neglected? Did we feel and and you know comfort and and work this out with your child that you love that is within you? Because that should be the child you love more than anything. Because it's your inner child that brings out the creativity your ideas your fun and must be kept in contact with nostalgia six of water memories remembrances just remember to tell yourself that you love you 
that you loved and that you were a great child and you know you were because look at all the kids in the world when they're at, they're at their um, most beautiful is when they're just letting loose and having fun and that's when we watch them at two three four five years old and they're just amazing you know to watch children you know children are great we've lost track of how important children in our life are and that if we make them important in our life they'll be important we will be important to them in their lives but we got to know our inner child in order to know and play with their inner child play with your kids as much as you can because it, it, it'll be something you never forget and you'll be able to go back to and they will too don't forget the memories don't forget to make the memories and this is all about memories remembering things and um, dreaminess and and this is about you know this is about see how she's she's in the spirit practically this is really kind of spiritual look she's like in the mist and making an offering making an offering and this is how you would be to your inner child you would be making making a love cup offering by going within and contacting your inner child it would be a love cup offering to yourself to yourself right right <laughs> what else would you say Holy Spirit about these precious people finding their precious inner child spirit and bringing you know it's your destiny it's your destiny it's what you're here to do is reconnect to your inner child that's what you're here to do yeah destiny however you see your destiny is being but one thing i know for sure uh the collective is looking for peace and happiness and joy and uh, we can only find that when our lives are busy we have things to do we flow through the day from thing to thing you know and and but at the same time we have to remember that we got to have fun too gotta to find things that are fun everybody has different things that are fun at my age it's fun to sit out on the sw in the swing and swing back and forth and look at the garden watch the puppies play everybody has different ways of relaxing and having fun but make sure that you look for a way to give yourself some really good time every day for for just personal enjoyment for your inner child 15 to 30 minutes every day should be invested in just something that you love that makes you smile and brings out your inner child with a bunch of joys I thought another baby was down there. I can't believe this baby come up here and went to sleep. Okay. What's the last word? It's your destiny to be happy. It's your destiny. It's your destiny to find the joy in your life. It's your destiny. This is all about... <laughs> this is four swords. Funny this should come up. Because this is all about getting your day to flow moving from morning to night um basically flowing through the things you know you're going to do a routine a routine really keeps you happy and kind of balancing out around that routine will keep your day in flow you know at a certain time you make breakfast at a certain time you know um you watch a certain program at a certain time you're going to do the laundry at a certain time it'll be time to begin to prep a meal at a certain time it's time to exercise at a certain time it's time to study 
at a certain time it's time to go outside and hang out and look at the stars for a while right and try to get some fun in there something that you love to do this is what i love to do i love to do this 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 i have fun when i come here because i just let my hair down and i do and say whatever comes to my heart oh look the maiden you know she's on a journey right she's following the white rabbit she's getting ready to go down the rabbit hole look she's heading towards this right here she getting ready to go into a whole new world of change but look this is her most youthful vibrant self and this is what god wants us to remember back when we were younger back when your your inner child was still flexing their muscle playing showing off look at me what i can do and um you know enjoying their life and that's what you need to do now you need to look at what you can do you need to look at how you're doing it and you need to be happy with who you are and you need your baby girl baby boy by your side to inspire you whether you're playing dice or you know let's grab a, a, a charm you see every time I come here I play I get to pull pretty cards and this is just like a playground for me look we got the star shine like the star you are shine bright oh look we got the inconspicuous white cat yeah this makes me think of the holy spirit right yes what else we got a rose true love get grounded get grounded and in your root chakra is where you'll find your inner child the first seven years after that after the first seven years you go between seven and fourteen it's somewhere in between your your root and your sacral and we have a sunflower here so you know the holy spirit god is saying shine and this sunflower as you know in the um what card is it where the inner the child is gosh darn it it's the card of the sun i think it's 20 19 or 20 but anyway you know the sun child and we're all children of the sun each and every one of us each and every one of us with a purpose each and every one of us working towards that purpose lifetime after lifetime after lifetime we all made a plan before we come in believe it or not you know go into your chakras and find out that's where the akashic records are right inside you it's all inside you everything you need to know about yourself is there and and it wants to uh be known to you unbeknownst to you wants to be known to you okay unbeknownst to you wants to be known to you okay yeah plant the seeds get your roots down there in mother earth see the energy of your life flowing into the planet earth and grounding in with rooted knots and tell the mother i'm here help me and she will she really helped me do a lot of inner world healing inner healing on my child and and she adopted me and i am her child I am a child of Mother Earth. I'll be the first to tell you that. Yes, I love the Father of Righteousness. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love all these things. My Father, my family. I love the, you know, Divine Masculine, the Divine Feminine. But I love my Mother. I always love my Mother. And Mother Earth has turned into one of the most supportive, supportive, family members in my life this is the ace of earth no ace of waters sorry sorry everybody can be wrong sometimes huh and that's wonderful when you can just say oh uh oh and be forgiven and move forward so this is the ace of waters this is about our emotions 
but the mother earth does hold those emotions because they're in our body right and it's very important that we go to those old emotions where we felt hurt and injured and like a doctor would work over a cut or a burn or a broken bone and heal it with our loving energy we're no different we doctor ourselves with our own loving energy it's a part of the healing process it's a gift hello honey come here or is just sitting down there looking up at me with such beautiful eyes you want to come here anyway just you know don't let your life be robbed by your own um, lack of interest in healing your own heart and I hope you guys don't get upset with me healing for saying that but you know I have to be true if you have a lack of interest it's a part of depression and if you have depression the only way to fight depression is to stand up and scream no yell against depression tell it no it can't have you that's right do it intentionally tell depression to go away I'm not saying this is going to work I'm saying fighting for your happiness and joy will show you that you're willing to stand up for yourself and that you're not going to give over to depression and then do one thing for one minute and show it just show it that you will not allow it love love yourself enough to fight for your right to be happy and it takes work and it's not easy but what the fuck else she gonna do what the fuck else she gonna do <laughs> get interested in you you're worth it and I know you are and when we start getting interested in who we are we're gonna change the damn world you know that right we're gonna break chains we're gonna make change and it ain't even going to be funny to them. They're not going to laugh. They're going to be looking like this. This is the king of swords. What I'm telling you is the truth. The power is in us to change the world. One, one healing at a time. Every time you heal a little bit, you'll get a little bit stronger. And it's a process. It's a lifelong journey. But every time you find one little owie and heal it you've made the whole body stronger and you move forward from there i love you guys i hope this video didn't make anybody upset i hope that i hope that you go within and find your inner child i, I ain't going to go no further everything i said is the truth god confirmed it all and we've been between life and death today and Pisces showed up and 11 or 5 I'm sorry 5 and Pisces and um, what else was there something else that was very prominent Pisces 5 jeez I can't remember oh well don't matter all I know is God we are in a process between life and death right now and the death is our inner child that we want to reawaken bring back into our life to bring joy and fun and goofiness and silliness and and just the happiness to be you know who we are and made it through what we made it through we have a right to be proud look where we are look what we went through to get here shit life is a battle all my dogs are down here looking at me like little soldiers <laughs> I love it it's so cute they're looking at me like like what are you who are you talking to mom who are you talking to <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this because this is hilarious I'm gonna pick them up and let you see come here there's one chicken come here come here come here to me come here 
and here's Zora. <laughs> Look at here. Mommy's talking to the pitcher. Yeah. Come on, Daff. Come on, hop up in the bed, girl. She's like, Mommy, you got your hands full, but aren't they beautiful? I tell you what, I love these guys. They make me laugh so much. And I lay in the yard and I roll with them and I play with them. Mm -hmm. And they are the light of my life. I feel like, um, yeah, they make me feel like a mommy again, right? Yeah, they make me feel like a mommy again. And it is not hard feeling that way. No, you can't get up there, Mommy. Steps up there. Wait till I'm done and I'll move it. And then you can. Okay, guys. I love y'all. Um, don't forget, when you learn to love yourself, when you love your inner child, when you heal, you will learn to love life so much more. It'll be brighter, funner, happier. And if you are dealing with things that make you feel like you don't want to do anything... You take one thing a day and reject it. Do it for one minute. You're showing yourself that you can push through and adapt. Push through. Only a little bit at a time. But don't let it stop you. It's okay. As long as you do that one thing for one minute a day, whether it's sitting there, I suggest to sit and breathe. And... Um, be present with your breath. Feel each and every breath that comes in. And feel the breath as it leaves your body for one minute. To bring presence back into your body and to get out of your head. Never live in this head. This head, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about your head, but I don't like living in my head. I like living in my heart. I like living in my body. I like living in love. My head is just, you know, male dominated. It's about order and objects and, you know, structures and things like that. I like living in my heart. It's about cycles and circles. You know, you circle around. As I circle through the house each day, I see things I want to do as I'm going in to do one thing. And then as I come back and circle around, I'm capable of doing that thing I saw I wanted to do. And then I see something else I need to do, but I'm on my way to do one thing. Does this make sense? So cycles and circles suit me better than going from one place to another in a straight line. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. What I like to do is, uh, as I see it needs to be done, then I like to mark it in my mind. And as I'm coming past, the next time with nothing to do, that's what I do. And with that being said, and all my goofiness, I love you guys, and you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.